affected by calling those functions that you've seen before and uh, then matching the best fitting one. So it's pretty bad. It doesn't really support uh, the XKB layout switching. So if you have, uh, like for example, Hus Christians had a problem where his first keyboard layout was Norwegian, his second one was English. He uh, switched to the English and the wine was still thinking that he's using Norwegian all the time. So that's something we want to deal with. Luckily, there is something called Wine Wayland that's coming. Uh, it has more sensible and less verbose implementation of keyboard handling that uses actually all the XKB goodies. And hopefully that can be with uh, some elbow grease adjusted to, uh, to X, Wine X11. And hopefully we will be able to borrow most of that. Uh, other than that, the keyboard handling is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have to do the usual uh, translation things like uh, sending events when they're supposed to be sent and X11 doesn't send them and the other way around, but that's normal. Then we have mice and touch screens, which are fairly straightforward uh, through X input. And fairly is doing heavy lifting here. So now the meat and potatoes. Uh, Non-keyboard and non-mice, so mostly game controllers. This is much more complex than the two uh, I mentioned previously. Uh, luckily, there's SDL, which we use for uh, everything that uh, that's like a gamepad. So we have multiple backends that are able to pull uh, those devices from different sources. And SDL is one of those. And SDL is a great library because it normalizes a lot of the controller stuff for us. Uh, think about the usual Xbox controller, like, uh, you know, uh, a, B, X, Y buttons, uh, bumpers, some triggers, D-pad, and analogs. And basically, we get all of them in the same form, and we pretend all of them are Xbox controllers. Then we have the usual Linux EVDF, which uh, is readable on most of the machines, uh, but it's already like heavily processed by the kernel, and we use that uh, whenever SDL is not good enough, uh, or like for some uh, more complex devices that game controllers, like uh, flight sticks and, and other devices. And there's the... Uh, last one, which is Hydro, which is used for some devices, but not all. And uh, we can rarely actually read those notes, and more on that a little bit later. So we then normalize all of that into heat form. So even if you get EVDF device or SDL device, we still create a fake heat device out of it inside of Wine. And heat is the USB uh, human input device uh, class. It's a very nice standard that has uh, report descriptors, uh, basically describes you what the device can send to you or what you can send to the device. And you just read out of it and uh, parse that output and then has, uh, say to it like, hey, yeah, I want uh, some force feedback, so please uh, vibrate that model for me. Uh, and Windows is pretty hit centric. You can see it everywhere. It leaks details everywhere. And uh, like if you look at direct input, it uh, leaks implementation details from here. If you look at raw input, you can basically subscribe on your window for raw uh, heat uh, messages uh, that you will just get, which is not the case on Windows, uh, on Linux, because everything gets parsed. So we normalize everything into that, and that's what gets passed internally inside of Proton. Uh, so uh, this is how we construct those descriptors. It's basically uh, a template. We say, like, yeah, add that many buttons, and then we get a fake device out of it. Uh, but we would like to use some of those devices uh, directly, if that's a possibility. So as I've mentioned before, we had problems with accessing some of those on Linux, but let's see where that goes. Uh, our case study is going to be this bad boy. Uh, this is DualSense controller. Uh, uh, shipped with PlayStation 5, and it has all the interesting stuff. So the normal uh, Xbox-like controllers, so for buttons, shoulders, uh, triggers, analog sticks, but it also has a, a touchpad, that's the thing in the middle. It also has an audio jack, and also haptic motors, which can play sound, which is wild. So first, to even work with those devices, we have to undo what Linux kernel is doing. Uh, because uh, we ship drivers that patch uh, the descriptors that the device is sending, that's putting them in weird modes. So uh, the Hit PlayStation module, whenever you connect this device over Bluetooth, it already puts it into advanced mode. 
So you just cannot treat it as a normal controller device because instead of sending the well-described report input uh, number one, which just says like, oh yeah, th this button was pressed, it said something that's completely opaque. It's not described, it just says like, yeah, this is some vendor stuff, don't, don't worry about it. So uh, we have to... Uh, we, uh, it makes sense for Linux because uh, the device is exposed by EVDEF and it also has gyros, it has the uh, touchpad, so we want to expose those and those are exposed as uh, different devices, uh, but we don't really want that when we access this uh, from the game directly. So this is what we have to do because, uh, so we have to trim the uh, reports, uh, the uh, input report a little bit to 10 bytes and then shuffle a few bits around uh, because it cannot be consistent with the uh, input report number one. It's mostly consistent, but you know, few fields are shuffled for whatever reason. Then those devices have something uh, called haptics and it basically exposes an extra device over USB. It has four channels. Two of those channels go to the three and a uh, half millimeter jack that you've seen in front and two go to the motors. So if you ever plug one of those devices in your normal desktop Linux and start playing some audio, suddenly you start hearing only mids uh, through your controller. Like there's no bass, there's some trebles, just mids and it buzzes weirdly. So, uh, it would be nice to have some wire, go uh, wire, guard, uh, wire plumber uh, rules to help with that, to not default to this device at all, because I guess this is not what most users want. Uh, it would be also great to uh, trim down that device. So in Wine, we would uh, love to have access to all four channels, but like users on desktop, who wants to play music on their haptics motors, right? So it would be good to have that user visible device as only the two channels that actually go to the jack. Uh, and then there's other uh, part where on Linux, you cannot access the full uh, vendor specific descriptors. There's Microsoft standard call that allows you to define container ID. Uh, and then it allows you to pair devices uh, like from different APIs. So you can pair the uh, audio device to the actual input device, uh, but we don't have that, so we do the next best thing and look at the SysFS paths, and if they are coming from the same USB device, we try to pair them. Then there's access. So on Linux, when you try to access any of the Hydra row devices, you get that, permission denied. On Windows, it's a little bit more complex, uh, but basically you just open a file and then you read from it, and you can access almost all devices other than the sensitive ones. So Windows uh, has limits on mice, keyboards, uh, pen devices, touchscreen, and touchpads, because this is what you usually like, use to type, out, uh, type information, type your passwords, and you don't want to have keyloggers sniffing on that. So uh, that's quite a sensible policy. But, and basically all of the game controllers uh, fall into the second category where you can just access it uh, in shared mode. So we would love to do that on Linux and currently in Proton we are pigging, uh, piggybacking off uh, Steam. So Steam ships uh, a set of rules for its Steam input system. So this is the thing inside of Steam that allows you to uh, remap controllers and do a few other things, and they ship a lot of uh, rules to allow user access to, uh, to those. And as you can see here, those rules for uh, PlayStation 5 DualSense controller over Bluetooth and over USB. Uh, and there's a lot of users of Hydro. It's not only one Proton, there's also Steam that uses it directly because they ship the, uh, the rules. There's also SDL, which has Hydro backend. Uh, there's also all the software that allows you to configure your mice. Uh, right now, like I think Radbug runs a daemon as a root and then allows you to access through that, um, like in some sanitized way. So uh, what we would like to see, and we tried to propose that in uh, System D, uh, was to uh, tag all the game controllers with a uh, special tag ID game controller, and then uh, either AppStream can do that, or we can ship a simple UDEF rules file that allows user access on all of those game controllers. That would require implementation of like simple uh, hit parser uh, just for the uh, report descriptors, and that probably would work great. Like we wouldn't have to maintain that list ourselves, just a single rule and it works everywhere. Uh, what we're getting instead uh, is that uh, heat uh, IO 
C revoke uh, IOCTL was merged in uh, kernel 6.12. This allows you to have a descriptor and uh, do that IOCTL on it. Uh, and then it basically closes it without closing it and allowing reuse of the FD. Uh, you get a message saying that there's uh, no device, you know dev. Uh, then also logging D support by take device, so that's uh, Dbus API, was uh, merged. And right now, uh, everything else is kind of in limbo, so that's, that ha will happen sometime in the future. So uh, we either will need a Wayland protocol support for that, or uh, XDG desktop uh, portal. Looks like it's going to be Wayland protocol. Uh, I think that's uh, the one of the latest uh, Post by Peter Hatter uh, said that the Wayland protocol, especially uh, specifically in input FD, is going to be the solution here, uh, which doesn't make us happy uh, because uh, that makes the solution Wayland only. And while Wayland is great and we have Wine Wayland in progress, it's going to require much more work and much more protocols before being fully usable and working as well as Wine X11 on. X Wayland. So this is a no-go. So maybe desktop portal, uh, that would be better. That would be at least usable. Uh, then there's session manager uh, has to implement that. So all your KDEs or your GNOMEs or your XDG desktop portal W roots would need to implement that. And then we would need to implement support for the portal um, or for the Wayland protocol inside of Wine. Uh, so the request that comes with that is I think that Leonard Potterlink was fine with uh, tagging things. So I think I am trying, going to try to revise that. So we would have access to, uh, so we'd have access to game controllers. And then the last part I think was no go because of security reasons, but we can probably ship that uh, rules file as like a separate system package getting installed on the desktop. Uh, yeah, that's basically, that's my little rant on the state of input devices in Linux. Any questions? So uh, I have some question about uh, uh, DualSense, I guess it's for any controller. Um, you mentioned there was the touchpad and the gyro, but I'm not sure if uh, I'm not quite clear if uh, that is also exposed if uh, HID raw is uh, access is enabled or not. Uh, yes. Uh, so Linux currently doesn't do anything when you uh, access the Hydro. The EVDF devices are still uh, accessible, and that's also a little bit annoying because you get a mouse, like a proper mouse from the touchpad, and some games want to parse that themselves, so they have support for that in-game. And you get basically two set of inputs that are uh, competing with each other. So when you try to move that touchpad in a game that supports it and that uses draw, then suddenly like the game reacts to it and then uh, the game sees cursor movement from X, which is not ideal solution. So one other thing that we would love to see is a way of inhibiting those EVDAV devices. So if we open the Hydro device, like send IOCTL or just like out of the box, say like, hey, disable the EVDEV stuff. And those gyro stuff uh, is part of the more complex descriptor. So the one that's vendor only. But we understand the format, it was reverse engineered. And also like I think Sony contributed the description of that as a part of the upstream driver. Okay, I see. So the game uses whatever Windows API, and then why will yes. go to hit raw and then grab the right info? Uh, the game uses hit raw. They oh. they understand that data. They just parse it directly. Oh, okay. And so one just, kind of is just a messenger in here. Yeah. Yes. So we basically open the hit raw device and read data from that, and then just pass it to application without doing basically any processing other than undoing some of the kernel stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>